Do you know that Betaflight Black Box Explorer is now web-based and you can simply go to this web link up here, which you should probably bookmark for the Black Box Explorer and you don't have to install it or worry about updates. And as improvements are made, it's just right there for you. Today, we're gonna go through that a little bit. And what's even better, it works a little bit in limited fashion for iNav logs as well. So today we're gonna take a quick look at it and see how to work with it now that it's a web-based application. So as mentioned, the first thing you want to probably do is bookmark the blackbox.betaflight.com website, and that will have, again, the Blackbox Explorer web app, which is the same thing. It was always a web app just housed in this uh, EXC that would install on your computer. Um, honestly, all the configurations are all written with JavaScript and HTML code, so they're all web apps. They're just put into a container. So this was just hosted up on betaflight.com website for easier access. You can actually get it on your phone as well. So think about that when you're in the field, if you need to look at something, you're having some trouble with something. So just as always before, you're gonna hit the open log video. And what's uh, the same, which is always a little bit confusing, is that same open, that same concept of how you hit open log slash video for either opening the log itself or if you want to overlay a video file behind this, you go always up to this open log. There is an only one spot to open things. It's always this button, but you can open a number of things, log files, videos, and trace templates. So the other thing we're gonna do is if you are switching over and it will stay with your computer. So it's not like, oh, you have to do this all the time. So once you load the UAV tech trace templates, which I'm sure you have and use, right? Cause it makes things simpler. But nevertheless, that uh, once you load these things either on your phone or on your web browser and here I'm using Chrome, that uh, it will stick. So we're gonna again, go up to load or open log file or video, which really should say templates, it, it loads a bunch of stuff. Um, and you can see how it talks about workspaces there as well. And then I'm gonna browse out to my UAV tech trace templates, which I have stored all in one location. And you can see I have multiple versions of them for different iterations of Black Box Explorer. And I also have them for iNav Black Box Explorer and separate them between fixed wing and multi-copter wing. And you can load these into the online beta flight version one as well. The only difference is um, if you're looking for like bare bone log review, basically stabilization PIDs, you can use this same web app for INAP files. It actually works pretty well for like noise analysis and PID tuning stability PIDs. But if you're getting to navigation mode stuff, it doesn't uh, interpret the traces uh, correctly. It doesn't have all the traces correctly for navigation mode. So there you'd have to use and download the iNav Black Box Explorer. And maybe one day that will be made a web app as well, or triple cross, they would just get integrated back together again, and we'd have one spot for both uh, types, but that would involve uh, somebody doing that. And uh, that's less unlikely, <laughs> but nevertheless. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and I have a modern log file, and you can see the version of um, Betaflight Black Box Explorer that's actually in the web app right now is the 3.7. So I'm going to go ahead and hit load on that. I'll hit open. And if you don't know where to get these trace templates, I'll drop a link down below. They are hosted on the UAV Tech website. So it's theuavtech.com forward slash black box. And uh, yeah, you can download them from there and open them up. Once you do open those up, you can see it kind of changes the look here. And then these are the different trace template setups here. You can either pick from the dropdown with this version of Black Box Explorer, which is a little bit more intuitive, or you can just hit the numbers uh, row above your keys on your keyboard, not a number pad, the number row, like one, two, three, four, and five. And that would associate with these numbers here. So if I'd hit one, I'd go to this one. If I'd hit four, I'd go to this one, so on and so forth. But there's a little bit more intuitive. You can hit this drop down selector here and go right to that trace template. So, and I think you have these descriptions here. This is an overview. This is your RC link uh, versus your PID sum. Um, this is your PID error, so how far it shows kind of how much deviation your quad is from your stick commands. This is stick tracking, so you can hone in, in on that a little bit well, a little bit more. So if you see a lot of stick error, like the, it's the, my quad's not tracking where I'm actually telling it to be, rotational rates and things like that, you can kind of look at this one to hone in on why is that the case. This one's blank, debug mode if you're really getting into it. 
uh, yaw details, pitch details, roll details, and then noise analysis. So we'll go to that one first here and just give you a, a quick look-see. Everything else works the same if you're used to Betaflight Black Box Explorer. You got the scrolling, the all that kind of good stuff. There is new things in here. So if I look at noise analysis on this plot, and I guess there's no, new things either way. My trace templates have some new things. And then Black Box Explorer uh, 3.7, which you can download, but you have this web app at this point. I, I wouldn't download it anymore personally. Uh, there's some new things in the code itself. So you mainly this frequency versus RPM. And that has to deal with you being on Betaflight 4.5 and later after this point, because it automatically records if you have bi-directional D-shot enabled on your ESC, it will automatically record the motor RPM data on every log. So with that, now you can start to look at frequency versus RPM, not frequency versus throttle, which is a little different. And you can see here's the RPM of the motors on here, this, this axis. And down here is the vibration frequency. Now, what you need to do in this release at Wells for RPM data, if you truly want to see the RPM, you have to multiply this by 60. So 260 hertz, that's 260 uh, oscillations per second. Uh, you can convert that to RPM simply by multiplying it by 60. So that's 12,360 RPM. So you can see you can just kind of do that manually. It would be nice if this would just be RPM, uh, just these numbers that it's reporting just multiplied by 60. So we don't have to do this part, but nevertheless, so you can see the difference between RPM versus throttle. Some, to some extent, it's just somewhat of the same information, just squished because this actually goes all the way up to 100% throttle. Whereas the RPM one is only going to go up to the max RPM that the flight experience. So it's just kind of stretches it out. But you can, depending on the scenario, see a little bit different information. And it's a just additional tool in the toolbox for kind of looking at some stuff to see if you have some issues and, and what might be the specific problem. The other thing that's in there, of course, as always, is the frequency versus uh, noise level or vibrations. And that is handy to get an assessment for the entire flight uh, and just kind of know where the peaks of noise are at in general and how, you know, how noisy is a thing. Usually if it's red, that's not great. Uh, more orange and into the greens. Now this is a seven inch drone, so it's to be expected, but you can hold down the shift key here and then kind of see what hertz that is at. You can do the same thing on these other plots as well. Like you can see here, if I hold down the shift key, I can see kind of that same spike is this spike here. And we have another spike over here. And you can see what percent throttle that's at over here. And then what uh, a vibration a frequency that is by the top data there as well. Now, as mentioned previously, if you do want to put a video underlay underneath of this, just as always before, you can go back to the open uh, file and video and then just go browse to a video, click on that, and that will underlay it in the log file. So ideally, of course, it's the same HD video that you have associated with the log, same flight. And then you can go and do things like hit. So say the flight starts right here at the beginning when it arms over here. That's the arming time. Hit M for mark point. And then you just keep moving this over until you get to a spot where the quad actually arms and starts to take off. So say that's right here. And then hit uh, Alt M. And that will align those two points so that when you hit play, that the log is aligned with the video. So you can see the quad taking off. And then also you can see where the log is. Uh, is happening. So that's M for mark point. You do the log point first, and then you browse to where that's out in the video just by scrolling along the bottom. And then you hit hold down alt and hit M, and then that will bring those together. And it does this little time sync offset thing over here, which you can write down or record or take a screenshot of or something of that nature. So if you have to open the log again and do the video again, you can just type that number in there instead of trying to line it up every time. Of course, as always before, you have these pieces of information up here. You can hit H and that will bring up the header data in the log and that will give you all the different settings that you can take a look at. That's all the same. Basically, by and large, uh, all the other features of Black Box Explorer are exactly the same. There's some polishing around the edges. Betaflight Black Box Explorer, by and large, uh, not by and large, is the most polished uh, Black Box tool 
in the drone industry that I'm aware of. Uh, better than RG Pilot, way better than RG Pilot, uh, and better than iNav as well. Just, just the little touches to it, like that holding down the shift, and then you know when you hover over these traces, it highlights. That can be that's super handy and helpful. So it, it is a, a a great tool, and the folks working on this, making it web based. Uh, is just really the icing on the cake for accessibility and not having to worry about downloading it for new versions and all that kind of stuff. As mentioned, you can open uh, iNav logs with it and you can see here's an iNav log. It actually changes the little look up here at the top. So you can see that one's a beta flight log and this is an iNav log. When you do that, you will want to hit open up here and for my trace templates at least, and load a trace template that's associated with iNav because if you go to uh, trace template zero, these deep, these uh, raw gyro traces, which in iNav you have to set as a debug mode. You don't have to do that in Betaflight. Or actually in iNav, you just click them on nowadays. Um, you, there are different names. You can see this name here is different than the name over here. So it's a different like trace the way it's recording it. So you have to load those different trace templates, at, you know, one for iNav, one for Betaflight. But you can use this same tool. And all the raw noise analysis works in here. It actually gives you the prots with the the hertz at the bottom here, and then you have this little, you know, indicator here, which you don't get. There's this does this is not a thing in iNav Black Box Explorer. And right currently, right now, for some reason, the uh, the hertz values at the bottom are not reporting correctly in iNav Black Box Explorer. So you can use this for that. But uh, yeah, once you get into navigation mode kind of stuff, you can see if I go to some of my navigation traces here, it's just completely empty here because it doesn't recognize these traces at all. So it it works for most pit tuning or looking at stuff for iNav, but not everything, especially when you're getting into navigation modes. If you are interested in a little bit more detail, check out the links down below. I'm gonna drop a Patreon video right now going through all the different buttons and all the different little side tips and little hotkeys you can press and how to do spectrographs and how to read spectrographs and just, a whole lot of more detail on Black Box Explorer and how much this thing can do on my Patreon. In addition to that, about once a month, I go through and do a troubleshooting video where I'm going out to the Discord and Facebook and helping people assess their quads, uh, mechanical and electrical issues, or ascertain if they have any, and also look at their tunes and noise performance and just all kinds of stuff. The things that you can really use black box to make sure you're running at peak mechanical and electrical performance and then also get your peak flight performance out of it by adjusting settings and doing tunes so that's something i do for patrons again about once a month again link down below to that other video and the patreon if you're interested in that outside of that thanks everybody hope this helps and check out this new beta flight online black box explorer it's pretty cool